Okay, in this video, I'd like to continue on my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 3B, and it's going to be on the cross product. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So, the previous video to this is number 3A, where I discussed the first video for the cross product. And essentially what I really wanted to do in that video was show you how to calculate it using the, the matrix notation. That was the purpose of the video. And in doing so, I showed you this initial formula here. That the cross product is the magnitude of A multiplied by B multiplied by the sine of the angle in between. Now, what I didn't do at the time was talk about the meaning of the cross product or its direction. Now, I said that when we talked about the matrix notation, it had an inherent direction. But this formula here has no inherent direction because I left something out and I kind of purposely did it. So we, it, we left out a direction vector. Now the direction vector is actually, it's normal. So it's a normal vector which means it's perpendicular, but it's perpendicular to the plane made by A and B. Now if you want to talk about how to calculate a normal vector you'll have to wait because I do that in video 8. So if you want to skip ahead and find out how to calculate a normal vector, by all means. But that's going to be grinding out the normal vector. Whereas in this video, I'm going to show you a very a kind of a neat way of doing it with your hands. So geometrically, A multiplied by B is the magnitude or area of the parallelepiped made by A and B. So if you can imagine, let's say this is A and this is B. Okay, that's A. And B. So then the parallelepiped. Let's just continue. Let's continue on this. This is the parallel pivot made by A and B, okay? So while A cross B, the magnitude here is going to get the area of our parallel pivot. But I'm telling you that the direction of, let's call this new vector, let's call it C. So C has to be perpendicular to both A and B. I'm telling you that by, by definition. It's normal to both A and B. Now, look at the way I've drawn uh, the, this parallel pivot or vectors A and B. It's on this, it's on my whiteboard. So that means C cannot exist on my whiteboard, it has to exist someplace else. So it might have occurred to you that either it exists, it, it must exist perpendicular to my whiteboard. So it either points upwards towards you, the viewer, or downwards towards the ground, one, of, one or the two. But sometimes it's not as, easy, uh, as straightforward to calculate its direction. You might have these very difficult directions and you're kind of working out how, which way does my new vector point. So in order to do, to do that, we, we, use these, we use rules. So we either use the left-hand rule or we use the right-hand rule. Now the reason one is called the left and one is called the right-hand rule is because of course either left or right hand. Now it might sound trivial but be careful that you use the, right, the, 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 the correct hand because I always use the left-hand rule and I never use the right-hand rule. So I will automatically go for my left hand. Whereas if somebody's talking to me about the direction of a vector they'll automatically usually pull out their right hand. And then you're like, oh, they kind of you get confused. So I always use the left hand rule. If you want, look at another video on the right hand rule, but I prefer this one, I think it's great. So, how do we get the direction of C, which is A cross B? The first vector is the one that's written first, so in this case it's A. What you do is you get your index finger and you point it in the direction of A. Then you, or, or, or your first vector, which is in this case A. Then you get your thumb and you point it in the direction of your second vector this case B. And then what you do is you extend your middle finger perpendicular to them. And that's the direction of C. So in this case, the vector C is pointing towards the ground. Okay, it's pointing down this way. Now, let's say if I, if I change the direction of the vector B. Now, this might be slightly more difficult. So I have A, then I need to point B, I need to point my thumb in the direction of B. So I need to twist my hand like this and then I point up. See the way your hand is all over the shop, so it, it vaguely points up out of the board or towards you, the viewer. So that, that, that does make sense. Now sometimes it gets quite difficult. You might be looking at other guys in the lab or the library and they're twisting themselves, they're contorting their bodies into all, all, all shapes, all directions. And that's because they're doing these rules. So how would I do this? Well, that's a bit awkward. I have to do this. That's also pointing up into the board. Sorry, that's pointing also up and towards you. Um, yeah, so that's that's all well and good, and of course it's pointing up and towards you because it's the opposite to the way it was a minute ago. All right, so that's how you do the that's how you do the left hand rule. And other people, what they'll do they, with the right hand rule, they'll say, we'll say that you um, 
how would they say the right hand rule? The right hand rule is basically you get your hand, you point it in the direction of your vector and then you curl your hand around it and all sorts of stuff. I just, I really, really don't like it. The only time I use the right hand rule is if I'm talking about Ampere's Law. So I prefer the left hand rule and that's the reason I'm going to show you that, that only. So like, the point is that your new vector C lives perpendicular to the plane made by AB. Now, one or two, one or two final things. Um, what else will I show you? Okay, so the the cross product, right? The, the, the cross product is distributive. So that means that A cross B plus C is it's distributive. So that means it's going to be A cross B plus A cross C. That's it's distributive. However, it is not associative. Okay, that is one of the properties of the of the the uh, cross product. Uh, sorry, not uh, it's not commutative. So it is distribu distributive. Okay, it's distributive, but it's not not commutative. Okay, and that means that b cross a is not equal to minus a cross b. For example. All right, and the next thing, of course, is that a cross a is equal to zero. That should make perfect sense to you. Okay. Now, next, the just I suppose this isn't really important, but let's say um, let's say I wanted to use this kind of cross this matrix notation for the cross product. Remember, we had i hat, we had the j hat, we had the k hat. There we went a sub x, a sub y, a sub z, b sub x, b sub y, and b sub z. And we went and we got the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. So this turned out to be A cross B. Now, what happens if, for example, we wanted to get C and we wanted to get the dot product of A cross B? Well, how does it fit in here? Well, it should make perfect sense that what we do is we just put C sub X, C sub Y, and C sub Z here. Note, by the way, the dot product is always going to give you a scalar. So you do A cross B and you're going to get a vector. And, but you're going to get a scalar in the end anyway when you have C. So in this case, you're just going to get the uh, the determinant of this particular 3 by 3 matrix. Now, it's not as straightforward as last time, but, well, it's, it is straightforward, I suppose, really, but uh, it's not as straightforward. Okay, so that's all I think I want to show you there. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstutorials.com.